Shields up, gentlemen. This is Storm of Night coming at you. We have another build video for you today. It's going to be a Stamina Dragonite. Getting right into it. We have 64 points into our Stamina. We have 20k max mag, 29.8 max health, and 32k max stam. Our Stamina cover is at 1000. Our weapon damage is buffed up. Back bar we have 4,000. Front bar we have 4,800. We'll ramp up about 54, 5,500, some odd, with the sets we're wearing. We are in Nord with the Serpent Stone, eating the Witch Sugar Skulls. I'm a werewolf. If you want to run that on your back bar for a little bit more stam recovery in this build, feel free to. Getting into our skills. Nothing's changed too much since Greymore or Markarth. Still running Rally, Noxious Breath, Venomous Claw, Izzing Swing, Executioner, Take Flight. Take Flight is bugged currently in this state until update 31, hopefully. Uh, your options, if you are tired of it misfiring, is Corrosive Armor, which I found while Xing is super just tanky and the amount of armor people are wearing right now with pariah in this meta corrosive just eats through it your next option would be dawnbreaker of smiting it's gonna give you a little bit more weapon damage and so good for that little bit of a stun and burst damage still cheap too up number the back bar still running volatile armor Fragmented shield for the major mending. Risk against time, this is going to be our snare removal. Not really using it for the crit damage, but the movement speed is really nice and the snare removal. Cauterize, still really good. Still feel like it's needed. Resolving vigor. And temporal guard for a little bit of damage reduction. Getting into the consumables. We do run tripods. Tripods is really useful. Especially whenever you're playing a build that really needs resource regen like uh, DKs in general. Still run Essence of Detection. There's a lot of Night Blades running around. There's multiple of these you can craft. Uh, movability pots. Super useful. Especially with the poison we're running, like the uptime you can have on immunity is insane. Poisons. Running the immobilized poison. To immobilize them, I'm gonna give you unstoppable 4.4 seconds. Pretty nice. Getting into the gear, I'm running Death's Wind on back bar. If you want to run Criticals Repost, you can. I like to bring my resistances back into line with my spell resistance, so that way it's at 33 and 30. But otherwise, it's just offset too much in my opinion. Running Badishran. I would like this to be a mall. I've not gotten lucky enough. So, we're on a sharpened great sword. Gives you on two piece for the perfected version, 877 max stam. We are running it sharpened. Again, if you're running a great sword, you need it sharpened with as many people is running high resistances right now. While momentum is active, casting stamina abilities will give you frenzy momentum. Increases your weapon damage by up to 38 five times upon reaching max stacks, and this works on a medium weave as well. Your next heavy attack consumes all stacks and releases a violent explosion in 8 meters for 61.89. That explosion does scale with your weapon damage, so pushing a lot of weapon damage with Vanish Shrine is really nice. Running Blood Spawn, you know, not all the other proc damage sets and just proc sets in general for monster sets are pretty doo-doo right now. 
So, everyone's either running Balorg or Bloodspawn for the most part. So the resistances are still useful. The alt gen is more burst, more regen. Nothing you can't like about Bloodspawn on a DK. Running Daedric Trickery. Your other set you could run other than Daedric Trickery would be Pariah. Pariah is really good as well, and that's what everybody's running currently. I personally like the Daedric Trickery. Gives you a line of health, stam, magicka, everything that we need on DK. And on 5 piece, when you deal damage, all you have to do is deal damage. Gives you 1 of 5 random major buffs for 21 seconds. 21. And it's every 9 seconds. So you can have multiple of these buffs up at one time. Giving you Major Expedition, which is a speed increase. Protection, damage decrease. Mending and Vitality, healing increase. Both of those can stack. And Heroism, which is an ult increase. Pariah, which is going to give you a line of health, armor, armor, and 9850. Armor based on the missing health. Your armor doesn't really get around the 9850 range until you start hitting about 15-20% health. So, it's good, especially on that back foot, when you're just trying to heal up and trying to stay alive. But I found having the extra speed and extra healing, and not even counting the damage decrease with protection, was just way more valuable. And it kind of equivalented itself to running Pariah when it came to the damage taken. You want to aim for probably 2, 3, sturdy, the rest of them in 10. Crit damage is insane right now. Running all stam glyphs. Necklace of Trainee, running two pieces of this. Infused weapon damage. Let me give you a line of health and max magicka. Running Malakas Band. We're in five heavy, two medium. So this is gonna help us with that damage difference, running heavy compared to medium. Because it just increases your damage done by 16%. Critical damage done is kind of not worried about because we're not hitting that high of crit anyway. We're only at 13% crit. Even on our front bar, we're only at 13. So we're not that worried about running for the crit damage. If you do feel like you want to drop this off, then go ahead. You can run something like agility for a little bit more weapon damage. You'll be missing some health, which I feel like is needed. Most people are pushing about 30k health, or close to it, this patch. Going into champion points. Hit red tree first. We're running survival instincts. Gonna really help with our uh, resource mitigation. A lot of status effects can be applied to you. Especially with necros, and how many people are fracturing you and you know debuffing your healing there's a huge amount of them that you don't even realize that it's going to constantly give you that 25% cost reduction on all your core combat abilities juggernaut I really noticed this whenever I put this on because I was running the extra regen and it was a night day difference whenever I put this on. Ironclad for a little bit of extra armor. You don't want to run that, you can run the regen. Balance Vitality for the extra max health. Going green tree. Now, this one, I've been farming a lot, that's why all these are here. But you want to kind of shoot for Gifted Rider, increases your mount speed. Liquid efficiency. I slaughtered that. 
Whenever you use a potion or a poison, you have 10% chance not to consume it. This really mitigates how many you use. I don't know if it's like higher than what it says, but there's a lot of times like I'll drink it and I'll think I haven't drunk it just because the number stays the same. Adds 10 minutes to the duration of any food or drink that increases your character's stats per stage. So the Rationer is really good for PvP, it's good for PvE, it's just... If you're doing in-game activities, this is really good to have. Steed's Blessing, if you want to run that one, go ahead. Um, there's nothing really out of the way about this other than like whenever you're out of combat, increase your movement speed. We're already slow, you know. You don't want to run that, you can run like... Uh, professional upkeep or something. Blue tree, that's what y'all are here for. Unassailable. Damage taken from area of effect attacks, so necros, wardens, all that whatnot. Templars, 10% damage reduction. Duelist rebuff, single target damage reduction. So night blades, other stam DKs, like anyone who's using D-Swing in general. 10% damage reduction. We have our Blast, you know, a little bit extra healing, uh, max stats, crit chance, not that worried about that. We did dump a little bit into the martial status effects, the mighty, offensive penetration. But other than that, these two are going to stack. So, with Dragon Leap, for example, it counts as a direct damage and a single target. So, you're getting that 20%. And then the 10% out of D-Swing and the initial hit off of your Noxious Breath or your Venomous Claw, it's going to affect all that. Executioner. I believe that's it, ladies and gentlemen. This is Storm of Night with my Stamina Dragonite build video. Slap that like, subscribe button. Follow me on Twitch.